timetable for SPM has already been released. MX exam has been postponed to 10 of March 2021, which is about two to three months from now. It's quite a long wait for those who have already prepared 90% for it. So are you one of them? If not, for those who are still not prepared yet, remember to use these two to three months to brush up on your week chapters, as well as practice more questions and also pass your questions and trial exam papers, all the questions so that you get used to the style of the questions being asked in exam. And I have students um, telling me that they are not willing to put in extra effort and time because they have no time to practice, but they want to score A+. So I have to tell you honestly that there is no shortcut in scoring A plus in Admets because it's considered as one of the toughest subjects in SPM. So what you can do now is to brush up on your basics, okay? Practice more questions from basic to intermediate to advanced. And then after that, go through all the passive questions and also trial exam papers. I'm pretty sure that one day, okay, when you find that you got A plus, all your efforts are certainly worth it. If you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So okay, long story cut short. In today's video, I'll be running through the questions in the latest Pahang Paper 1 trial exam. You may download and print out the exam paper yourself. I've already included the link in the description below. But for those who don't have printer, no worries. Okay, you may pause the video for a while and then try to attempt the questions and then you play back to check your answers to see whether they are correct or not. Okay, I've also included timestamps in the description Okay, for those who just need to refer to selected questions only. Okay, let's begin with question number one. Okay, let's look at question number one. This is under the chapter vector. So for vector, you need to write in the form of xi plus yj. So what's the meaning of i and j? So i means it moves to the left or to the right horizontally. Okay, J means it moves upwards or downwards vertically. Okay, now let's look at this question. So diagram 1 shows two straight lines OP and OQ. So OP means it moves from O to P. Okay, O to P here. Yeah, and OQ, o, OQ means it moves from O to Q. Okay, so from here, okay, ve express vector OP in the form of XI plus YJ. So we have to express in this form. Okay, so to get from O to P, we have to move to the right here as much as five units okay so five units yeah and then it moves upwards as much as three units okay so therefore the vector op will be 5i plus 3j so that's the answer for a okay now let's solve for b so vector qo qo means from q go to o okay q to o it means we have to move to the right first then go down Okay, move to the right first, yes? move to the right as much as 8 units and then we move downwards. Okay, move downwards here as much as 4 units. So because it's moving down, so it's negative 4. So in matrix notation, to find vector QO, okay, we have to write in bracket. So on top, we're going to write 8 and at the bottom, we're going to write negative 4. So that is the answer in matrix notation. Let's look at this question too. This question is under linear law. So diagram 2 below shows the line when x over y against x is drawn. So let's check x over y here. So this is going to be our big y and x is over here. This is going to be our big x. Okay, so determine the nonlinear equation connecting y and x. It means we've got to find the nonlinear equation. So when you see this question, this question comes out in SPM every year. Okay, so first thing is you need to find the gradient. So they give you two coordinates here, okay, which is which is 0, 06 and also 39. So to find the m gradient equals to so the formula for gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, okay, let's say this is the first point x1, y1, and this is the second point x2, y2. So y2 Okay, y2 will be 6 minus 9 over, so x2 will be 0 minus 3. Okay, so this will be negative 3 over negative 3, which is 1. Okay, and we know that from here, we know that the y-intercept c is equal to 6. Okay, so we're going to substitute this, these values into y equals to m x plus c. Okay, so y would be here, which is x over y. So x over y 
equals to the m is 1 and then the x is x then plus 6 because the c is 6 okay so therefore the final answer is x over y equals to x plus 6 so that's the answer in non-linear form let's look at question number three this question is under the chapter functions so given the function fx is equals to rx minus s and f square x equals to 9x minus 5. So where r and s are constant, find the value value of r and s if r is less than 0, means r is negative. Okay, so first we got to find manually, okay, what is the f square x using the rx minus s, and then we compare with 9x minus 5 on the right. Okay, so let's work this out. So f square x equals to 9x minus 5. So I'm going to find manually what is the f square x using the here rx minus s. Okay, so f square x so will be f fx. So we're going to do this slowly. Okay, so 9x minus 5. So fx I'm going to put inside here rx minus s. Okay, equals to 9x minus 5. And then this rx minus s, okay, I'm going to sub it in. Okay, so this one, let's say this x. Okay, so I'm going to sub it into here. Can you see or not? Okay. Okay, let's continue. So r, rx minus s, then minus s. Don't forget, okay? Don't forget the minus s, yeah? So equals to 9x minus 5. And then the next step is to expand the bracket on the left side so r square x minus r s minus s equals to 9x minus 5 okay and then after that we can compare we can start comparing now okay compare both sides so we see the x here and the x here okay so the coefficient for x is r square okay and the coefficient for this is 9 Okay, which means that r square is equals to 9. Okay, so r square is equals to 9. Okay, so to find r, we got the square root the 9. Okay, so we get r is negative 3 and 3. Okay, but it's stated here that r is less than 0. It means that we choose the one which is negative. So therefore, r is equals to negative 3 because r is less than 0. Okay? So now, we have to find the value of s. So, to find the value of s, I'm going to compare this one, this one, okay, this whole thing, with this. Okay, so let's work this out. So, negative rs minus s is equal to negative 5. Okay? So, I'm going to substitute the value of r that I've gotten just now, which is negative 3, into here so negative negative 3 s minus s equals to negative 5 okay so negative negative become positive okay so which means is 3 s minus s equals to negative 5 so 3 s minus s is 2 s so 2 s equals to negative 5 so to find s okay i'm going to move the 2 over to the right hand side become divide so the value of s is negative 5 over 2 so that's the final answer Let's look at question number four. This question is about inverse function. Let's read the question. So given that inverse hx is equal to 7 minus 3x and hx is equal to px plus 9, find the value of p and q. Okay, so first I'm going to find the inverse function for this. I'm going to find hx and then I'm going to compare to the right side which is px plus q. Okay, so let's solve this. So there are actually a few ways to find inverse function, but we'll use the simplest and the shortest way, okay, which is the pro way to find. So let this to be y, okay, y equals to 7 minus 3x. Okay, so our target is to make x as the subject on the left. So 3x is equals to 7 minus y. Okay, so x is equals to 7 minus y over 3. So x is equals to 7 over 3 minus y over 3. Okay, so if I want to find hx, okay, I am going to rearrange it. So this y, I'm going to change to x, okay, because hx means in terms of x, okay. If hy, they'll be in terms of y, okay. So minus or this plus 7 over 3, okay. And then after that, I'm going to compare with this. 
Okay, so let's compare. So Px plus Q, okay, is equals to negative x over 3, then plus 7 over 3. Okay, so let's compare this. So P is equals to negative 1 over 3, and Q is equals to 7 over 3. So that's the answer. Okay, now let's look at question number five. So this question is about quadratic equations. Okay, so in quadratic equations, normally they will give you the two roots. So let's read the question. Form the quadratic equation, which has the roots two over three and one over four. Given, give the answer in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, where a, b, and c are constants. Okay, and this is two marks. So the roots given are, okay, let's say roots. I'm going to write it here. Okay, equals to two over three, okay, and one over four. Okay, so we're going to find the SOR and PAR. So, the sum of roots, we call it SOR, S-O-R, okay, equals to, so we plus them together. So, 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4. Okay, so let's solve it with the calculator. So, what is 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4? Okay, so 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4. So, we get 11 over 12. Okay, so we get 11 over 12. So, next we find the PAR. Okay, PAR is, it stands for product of roots. So P O R par. Okay, product of roots. So which means we times them together times 2 over 3 times 1 over 4. So we get 2 over 12, which is 1 over 6. Okay, and then we sub it into the general quadratic equation, which is x squared minus SOR x plus par. Okay, equals to Zero. Okay, memorize this by heart. Okay, remember saw so Paul, saw so Paul, saw so Paul. So Paul in Cantonese means crazy woman. <laughs> okay, saw so Paul. Yeah. Okay. So x square minus. So the saw here is eleven over twelve x, and the Paul is one over six. So one over six. Okay, equals to zero. So now we're going to make it into one line. So we're going to get rid of the denominators. So in order to get rid of the denominators, all the terms we must times with the biggest denominator, which is 12. Okay, all times 12. So it will be 12x squared minus 11x, then plus 2 equals to 0. Okay, and then you see whether you can simplify or not. If you cannot simplify, you just leave that answer as it is. Okay, there's actually another alternative way, okay, that you can use besides using this method. Okay, okay, let me show you the alternative way, okay? So later, you'll find which one, which method that you prefer. Okay, let's say this is method A, it's method B. Okay, yes. So for method B, okay, you see the roots here, it's given 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 means if I write in bracket, it's going to be 3x minus 2. Okay, and then this is 1 over 4. So 1 over 4, it means that it's 4x minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, so how do I get the bracket? Okay, see here, 3x minus 2, if I make it equal to 0, make it equal to 0, so 3x minus 2, my x is 2 over 3, right? Okay, and if I make this equal to 0, so 4x minus 1 equals to 0, so x is 1 over 4. Ha! Huh. okay, but, okay, let me erase this first, okay, so that not to confuse you with my side working. Okay, so, if you want to form... Uh, a quadratic equation, quadratic equation in the form of a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. You have to expand the two brackets. Okay, so let's expand this. Yeah. So three x times four x, and then after that three x times negative one, and then negative two times four x, and then negative two times negative one. Okay, so let's expand this. So you get twelve x squared. Okay, then 3x times with negative 1, you get negative 3x. And then negative 2 times 4x, you get negative 8x. And then negative 2 times negative 1, you get negative, or you get positive 2. Okay, equals to 0. Okay, so after that, we solve this. Negative 3x minus 8x is negative 11x, and then plus 2 equals to 0. Ha, huh, ta-da, that's the answer. So there'll be two alternative ways, uh, two ways, okay, that you can choose whichever method that is suitable to you. Okay, which one that you like. Okay, some people prefer A because this is what we learn in school and some people prefer B because B is also a method that is accepted in SPM. Well, that's it. Five questions for today. Stay tuned to my next video which is question 6 to question 10 coming up very very soon. Bye!